we'll go ahead and call this uh, Monday, May 17th, 2021, Port Authority meeting to order. First up, approval of regular meeting minutes from April 19th, 2021. Does anybody have any questions, comments, concerns, and so on and so forth? First month. We have a motion from Steve to approve. Do we have a second? No second. I just had a comment. Yeah. Really sorry. There's just it says OTP in there and shouldn't say OTC. I think I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, Amy had mentioned that to me in the passing. Yeah, that, she emailed so. me too. Oh, okay. yeah. Catching All right. And mm -hmm. I didn't <laughs> catch it when I looked at the image. So. That's it. Yeah. Well, uh, aside from that, uh, so we have the. Motion and a second. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Then, Clara, could we please get a dairy update? Yes. I made this whole thing. I was going to pull this up right here. Okay. Nice. <laughs> As you know, we have been working with the dairy property for quite some time now, and uh, the process is moving along. We have had some, some good luck and some bad luck recently, I guess. Some good luck is that we are having really good discussions with Deed regarding the demo loan. So Bill has been working with Braun Intertech on getting all of the associated costs of the clean up, clean up and demo taken care of. They're being fairly receptive to the work that's been done and getting that covered under the revolving loan funds. So that's good. Um, one piece of the puzzle that is a little bit uh, maybe less than ideal right now is when you look at our, our little timeline here that I've got worked up. So we went through the cleanup and demo. We did the subdivide and survey process. That took much longer than anticipated. And the issue appears to have been due to the fact that the survey company was shut down for two weeks at the start of the pandemic and that set them behind so they did not get to our site to survey until relatively recently which then led us to a um, delay in starting the appraisal process which we are currently in the middle of the appraiser was here on friday we walked through the site he got a bunch of questions answered took a lot of pictures he's expediting the process as much as he can um, everyone involved is aware of our june 30th deadline so they're Things are looking good that we will have all of the work accomplished that we need to have accomplished. Um, following the appraisal is a DNR review of the appraisal. They've agreed to expedite their, their process as well. So those are good things. Um, just in the interest of being extra careful, we do have a request for a further extension in with LCCMR. Um, they are very open to it. They've been really helpful in, in working with us. The only issue is that it has to be approved by, by the legislature. Um, and right now, the bill that this funding is tied up in is potentially not going to be moving forward. So um, we are watching to see what happens there. If the bill does pass, um, if House Republicans are, are, and Senate Republicans allow that to happen, then we will be granted an extension. If that does not happen, then we will not have an extension. So we're watching that closely, but at that point, we are, we'll be able to finish our LCCMR transaction whenever that process finishes out and then we can move into the marketing and, and sale. But that's where we are right now. It's a little, the timeline is tight, but we're doing everything we can to stay under that June 30th deadline and I'll keep you posted on how that goes. But um, any questions or Bill, do you want to make any further comments about the deed stuff? Um, yeah, with deed, so like Clara alluded to, you know, they question costs throughout this and, you know, we'll argue our point and say, no, I really think all these qualify because, of course, we want to maximize. And I told them time and time again, we need all the funds that you approved for us. I mean, that's I kind of am not going to accept something less. <laughs> <laughs> Brian was great. He got um, Braun Intertech, uh, Mark Johnson, 
on a um, Zoom call with Deed, that really helped a lot because Braun was able to talk the language and even Deed went back to MPCA to ask some questions and come together and say, yes, we'll approve these. These costs may be a little gray, we'll hold them to the end. And if you need those costs and we'll revisit them and see if they'll be eligible. So it's a long process, but I'm glad that is um, moving forward. And then that extension. Yep, the deed, yep, did deed, mm, deed did grant a six month extension for, for that um, agreement. So that's, that's also gonna be really helpful with this timeline here at the end. Yeah. So they're just looking at prudency, is all they're looking at, as far as there's some, what the other thing they're looking at? As far as the cost? Yeah. They just, they really read this and like, one example is, okay, establishing turf on the riverbank. Well, we don't normally pay for turf. And we have to explain to them, no, we removed all this ash. If we don't put that in, it all runs into the river. That's one of the main things is you get that established. And, Getting through that, they went, oh, okay, and now we will approve that. So it's things like that. So, so prudency and methodology and right. Right. all that. Okay. Well, we appreciate you pushing, for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, we have to. We, we question everything and push, make our case. So, But Braun was extremely helpful with that, just having that expert firm really, that was good. <laughs> yeah, thank you for all your work on it, uh, all staff. And... Um, yeah, well, let's just, we'll just try to be as proactive as possible to um, prevent, uh, yeah, we don't want anything to fall through. So, yeah, keep us posted. Let us know if there's anything we can do. Yeah, and it, I mean, that's not to say that we don't have options for the site if all of these funding options don't work out, but this is the ideal scenario, so. They will. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. They have to. Yes, <laughs> they will work out. <laughs> is Andrew? Is this something Joel can help us out with? Is he working on it? I don't think it's going to be necessary. Uh, I think we're going to we're going to use other channels <coughs> such as pressure on the commissioner, PNR, and governor, and, and other channels before we have to rely on the legislature. Because, like Claire mentioned, this is this bill is really tied up as the bargaining chip to try to stop the clean cars initiative. Senate Republicans have taken the environmental LCTMR bill, and that's one they're holding hostage for that. And um, this isn't a winning strategy to bank on the legislature by June 30th. The winning strategy is to put the pressure on the points in the bureaucracy that can move these timelines a little bit. And that's what we're doing. I'm, I'm fully comfortable that we're going to be there by June 30th. It's just we need, well, I guess my question to the court would be, is there anything else you need from staff prior to us closing the transaction? Is there, do we have the latitude once all of these pieces are in place to just go ahead and, and close the transaction? I think previous, previously you guys acted on the purchase agreement between the port and the city. And if I, I was just curious if you wanted to act on that again, or if you guys are comfortable with us just proceeding to the finish line here as it may get tight with a number of days towards the end of this thing. Yeah. Um, but Maybe we should have an action to that today if you are comfortable, because again, this transaction is an internal transaction. It's the Port Authority selling to the general fund of the Port Authority selling to the city's general fund. So yeah, because it's the city that gets the LCCMR grant. The Port Authority sells that strip of land 11 plus acres for the one million dollars so yeah it's the city council even with the extension yeah. on that that's it's right. technically it's a city grant it's not the port authority grant but it might be appropriate for the port to pass a motion today you know again confirming this final transit the sale or the final analogy of the transaction so we're yeah. You know, next month having to take one extra action or do anything like that. But Another thing, if you're within the context of what we approved earlier, if you need reaffirmation, that would be right there. I think that would be good. Generally, when the city sells land and we're trying to get this practice with the port as well, we take action at two separate meetings just to give the public the opportunity to comment. And in this case, they had years to comment. So I wouldn't be hesitant to mm -hmm. reaffirm that today if, if the court is comfortable. Yeah, I mean, if you're on budget, I mean, right there, you're on budget schedule as we originally planned out to reaffirm that is, it makes sense, right? And I can't speak to the budget of the project because that's in Brian's hands from the, the project side, but 
the transaction amount is $1 million. That is unchanged and it will not be changed regardless of what the budget were to do at the dairy site. Mm -hmm. Sure. You know, part, part of this is, uh, I won't speak for everybody else, but myself, I get lost a little bit. I know what the dairy project is about generally. And then every time we have an update, it's, it's kind of specific to specific things because you're all more versed than, than I am. And so I get lost a little bit in that. And that's my question I had is if we can have these updates, a true project update with, you know, like a high level schedule and budget would really help me see here's where we started. Here are the high level things. Here's where we're at. You know what I mean? And here's where we're at year to date budget or whatever. That would really be good. I guess that's more from you probably, Claire. And that would help when you ask this type of question, be like, oh, yeah, that doesn't make sense or it doesn't. I, guess that's, I need something a little bit more than, than what we've been getting just because I can't follow it. Just be open to it. When do we expect to see budget updates from Brian? We'll have to ask Brian that. We can see because that would be an engineering yeah. related. I totally know what you're asking for. And in essence, it's answering your question before you even have to answer it that just says okay because i want to know too do we have any shortfall on this you remember a long time many months ago we came with that project budget when we um, approved the carlton contract and we looked like we were probably even to the good with no shortfall in here where a shortfall would come in is where okay are some costs truly deemed ineligible by d and now we have to pay for them another way so yeah um, I need that as well too. We just we we're still working out those allowable costs with the but yeah. Um, let's I think whatever Brian does normally. I mean, normal course of business, he must update yeah. somebody every month. Track a project budget. Yeah, I think we just need every month whatever you get yeah. staff show us and then high level schedule. I don't know who the project manager is. I mean, this can get very detailed. We're not asking for detail. Just, just high level. Here's where we started. Here's where we're at. I mean, that would really help come into this conversation. So we'll ask Brian, and maybe we can even get that out prior to the next meeting, since we are approaching June and we're approaching these deadlines. And yeah. 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 And that is also information the appraiser needs. So it's been requested, but I don't okay. have it yet. The other thing that would help is just the concept behind what we're doing here. A summary over the top of that every time. That I, I'm not trying to be clean, but literally sure. the transaction you're talking about, I get reminded of it about every three months and I go, okay, what was that again? I flip back to my notes. So not, not your issue, mine, but I'm just saying as a board member coming in, here's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Here's who owns it. Here's the here's what's taking place. There's probably just bullet points. That's that's what we're trying to shoot for by the end of this deal. And then here's the schedule and the budget. I think you yeah. would be able to zip right through. So off the cuff, I mean, what we're go what, what's happening here was it was a blighted property. It was an eyesore, pretty dirty. So Port Authority came in. Um, it was it was requested by council members. I think there were some community members who were involved, and the Port Authority decided to uh, pursue it. Lots of back and forth with the owners. Port Authority now owns the site, did cleanup, and then the the end goal is that it could be available for um, mostly housing. That yeah. part I get. <laughs> that's okay. like a little bit deeper, and you have to do it right now. I'm just saying, I think that's part of the protocols. Literally, here's the overview of the transaction, mm -hmm. and then here's where that. So I don't have, I may have described that very well. But. Well, Steve, I tell you what, I've been neck deep in, in this theory property for years now, and it's something like that would help me as well. Sure. So, um, yeah, if, if Claire, if you could make something up, that would be appreciated. Then we can provide well, we can have Brian. Brian come in too, because he's, I mean, he's, when you mention a project manager, I think I ultimately that would be him over the last sure. couple of years with the sure. with the demo and cleanup. He's been the point person for all of that. So. Yeah, it's just something that's pretty much normal course. We just want to see what the normal course is and must have it someplace. So hopefully it's not like that. But back to your point, I definitely I think we should reaffirm whatever you need. Is that a motion, Steve? Yeah, it's a motion. Okay. I'll second it. Seconded by Caroline. Uh, and so for clarity, the motion is to allow city staff uh, discretion in pursuit of that transaction. Mm -hmm. Close the transaction. Okay. All in favor, say aye. And within the normal, whatever we applied for per budget and schedule. So if it's grossly over those, then it wouldn't fit. Right? I, I think you're just looking on the, you're just looking on the, City portion, so it's the, 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 it's the eleven acre. So the, the, as you say, there will be no budget discrepancy. It's we're, we're selling the eleven acres to the city for a million dollars. Thank you. Yes. So 
it, but it, but the other piece of it is where the budget might be moved. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Well said. Okay. Uh, all in favor of that motion? Aye. 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 All opposed? Same side. Okay. Motion carries. Thank you all. <coughs> Next, uh, Claire, it's time for our Port Authority discussion on priorities and budget. Yeah, we're going to start with budget, and we've got Bill here with us tonight to give us an update on the port budget. So I handed out um, some financial statements and just thought it's good to give you a, a little update. Now, I provided you with the December, uh, the year end financial statements previously, probably a couple months ago. And I said I'd come back because we would be adjusting for the dairy property in those financial statements. So I'll just touch on what changed in those December financial statements. So if you have those up, if you're looking at the balance sheet, you can see um, the cash, Port Authority cash, CBHH, the interest receivable, taxes receivable, all that's the same as what you had uh, previously. The due from other governments federal, the 676,251.81, what that is, is that's the accrual for the forgivable portion of the revolving loan fund. Um, so work through this with our auditors and because we have, you know, we were approved $1,230,000 for that revolving loan fund. That's one of the, the big funding um, portion for this dairy project. $450,000 of that is a bond. So it's actually debt. So you don't accrue debt. It's actually when we get reimbursed from deed for the debt portion, it'll come on as bond proceeds at that time. But for projects expenditures we've had that they will be forgiving under that program then shows up as a grant thus the receivable here and it's then in the federal revenues on the p l side um, the property held for resale that also changed because we moved all those um, project expenses for the dairy into that um, three million three hundred thirty nine thousand dollar number so that includes for the dairy about $2.6 million is the total accumulated cost so far of that dairy project. Then the Norgren property is in there for $278,000 and the remaining just under $500,000 is the cost basis of the industrial parks that we own right now. So that's all lumped together in saying this is the property that we have for sale in the future and even currently as a port authority. Now, offsetting that increase to the, that asset there, property held for resale, due to other funds is where we increase that for the Port Authority, ultimately <coughs> owing the city's project fund um, for those dairy costs. So in essence, that project fund is fronting the cash for this. The city is paying out the cash up front. So as these funding sources flow through the port, they'll flow back to the city in this due to, due from. Um, of that of that fund. That's basically the changes on December. So I won't go through the other financials. The PL really stayed basically the same, except for that federal revenue putting that in. There was just a, a slight change in some expenses for CBHH. Um, going to the next one, I just updated these today through the end of April. Um, so our cash position, not a lot different. Um, the Port Authority side of that down a little bit, but we have not received any of our tax levies yet this year. They come in in two payments. So this summer and then towards the end of the year. Uh, the CBHH up a little bit there. Again, a lot of that cash is held for um, improvements over at the Community Behavioral Health Hospital. Um, the remaining items on the balance sheet are pretty um, similar to what they were in the December one that we just looked at. So we have down in the fund balance, we have restricted for CBHH operations, just about 39,000, 466,000 is for um, the CBHH capital improvements, leaving undesignated fund balance of uh, just over $2 million for the port. And that of course includes the land that we're sitting on and have um, for sale as well. If you turn over to the <coughs> statement, uh, so far this year, we've been receiving some rent in on the farm rent, the rent we received from the racetrack, they pay all that up front. So we're a little heavier on the earlier part of the year than the latter part. 
And then the rents for the CBHH facility come in monthly. So that's four months worth of rent there. Our economic development area and expenses, that's for the operation of the port. Um, just some wages, benefits, supplies there, paying some property taxes on the industrial parks. Uh, CBHH facility there, um, that's you know running the state facility. All that is funded through the state. Uh, so flipping through to the back, um, interest on investments. So this is kind of the last area of this. Normally that's a positive number. So far through April, it's showing up as a negative number. I don't want you to be alarmed at that. Um, we invest um, all city funds together and we you know, commingle them, put them in our portfolio. Cities are required to mark investments to the market value. So you earn your interest every month, you recognize that in your financial statements. And then let's say this month, our investment value went way up. We put that in as income, okay? When interest rates rise and values drop, oh, we have some give back. That's what you're seeing here so far. So, but we watch that, we have good returns over the long term. So we'll we'll see that go up and down. So that is through April. Again, not a lot different than December. The last page I gave you, um, I didn't update today. It still, I think, looks pretty close from what we had with December, the cash projections. Just showing at the end of 2020, we ended with a cash balance for the Port Authority operations of 383,000, just about 384. Uh, remember, within that number, we had $60,000 of that crushed material sales from the dairy site. So we may want that to go back into the dairy project to help offset if we do have a shortfall or something. So I'm showing that in 2021 as possibly coming out. You can see with the levies there, just putting in the budget numbers, um, cash balance actually growing a little bit over the, the coming few years. So just wanted to, as a frame of reference where we're at and what we see that cash um, looking like. I didn't put anything in here really with the dairy, with this sale transaction, because our hope is that, that whole transaction will pretty much break even. Our funding sources will match where that project is. And of course, I'll be working that out with Brian as we just talked about. Um, and then we'll update you on that as, as we move forward and get closer to the end. So any questions on the financials? So, so the investment piece, we're not required to mark market land? 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 Right. Um, no, that's historical cost unless um, it were to be, if the, let's say what the county had it valued at was way below what we had our cost in, then we would have to mark it down, but we do not mark the land up to the market value. Those are just accounting standards. So just investments, just our, just our investments. Just our investments, yep, okay. cash and investments. We mark, but and they require to put them on the income statement. Yep, yep. that's okay. Very and that's unique to government. Yeah, it, is. it all relates to years ago when wasn't it Orange County that filed bankruptcy? <laughs> yeah. It was after that that they went all across America. Governments are going to mark their so we can see every month what is happening with government investments. Are you making money, losing money? So to try and get those red flags going sooner for some places. Okay, last question. Not us. <laughs> On the uh, restricted area, yep. what generally what is causing the value in each one of those items? Like what what requirement, you know, values the first one at thirty nine and the second one at four hundred sixty six and so on? Okay, so those restricted fund balances, the first one for just about thirty nine thousand. So that is money we've received from the state of Minnesota for operating the um, CBHH okay. the facility. Future, future and then the 466 is also received from the state, but it's designated for the capital repairs of the building and the parking lot. We are not allowed to spend that money for anything else. It's purely gets reconciled with the state. And that's why it's that outside restriction. Okay, thank you. You bet. Thank you, Bill. Okay. Good question, Steve. Thank you. All right. Then, unless anyone has any more questions on budget. Uh, Claire, would you give us an update on the Progress Drive land sale? We're gonna 
stick with this uh, section of the conversation. Oh, my apologies, priorities. Yeah, no, that's okay. we're, yeah, we're gonna talk okay. about priorities. So now we've gone over our budget a little bit and um, we need to make some decisions. So we're right at the beginning, believe it or not, of the 2022 budget period. So we wanna be able to um, work with, with Bill and the council to come up with a budget for the Port Authority that's gonna fit in nicely with the overall plans for the city. Um, and I think in order to do that, we should really narrow in and figure out what the port's priorities are for the next year or so um, with the goal of going ahead and doing a comprehensive plan at some point here in the near future but we should have some direction um, currently so that we can start making um, informed budget decisions about where we want to be allocating our, our money so i did i'm gonna share the screen again and then rebecca um can are you able to unmute yourself from your computer yep. or do i need yep. to yep okay great good great. one second So last month we had the presentation from um, Ottertail County and MHP about housing. Um, and I think that fits in really nicely with a, a, just a quick conversation about the community needs that we're seeing and figuring out maybe where the port can fit in to try to help alleviate some of those community needs. So the biggest ones are housing, workforce and childcare. As you are aware, based on last month, there is a housing shortage um, of a variety of different kinds of housing styles, single family, affordable, etc. Another issue that we are seeing in Ottertail County is um, a shortage of workforce and that ties, I mean, all of these tie in to each other, but there are hundreds of open jobs currently and they are not being filled. So part of the issue with workforce that we're seeing is people are not finding places to live and people are also not finding places for their children to go to be cared for while they are working. So those are, like I said, all intertwined. Um, finally, another large issue is childcare. There is a shortage of childcare slots, which can hinder the growth of our workforce and can also hinder people moving here because if you can't bring your child anywhere, you can't come to work and live. So um, I guess a good example of how that issue is impacting local businesses and therefore our local economy is Apple Tree Dental has reported that they are having a huge amount of trouble hiring hygienists and other people to work at their facility because there is not enough childcare available for the children that would be coming with the new workers. So it's it's real issues they're all tied together and um i'd like to just see what the port can do to maybe help alleviate some of these things we've been over the land usage uh, map we have some sites for housing identified we have some sites for industrial growth identified um, so now i think it would be good to prioritize how we want to be spending budget to figure out how we can maybe meet some of these needs and best use the um what we have available as a port. So I will go sit down. I think that we can't figure this out today. Couldn't we schedule a working session to, to really mull over these in a major way? Sure. Yeah, that would be a good idea, it seems. Um, I guess, yeah, me just thinking out loud, I, you know, I know that these are, you know, the three main concerns that are facing our economy right now. Um, as far as how to prioritize or divide up resources, yeah, I'm not really qualified to make that call. So, um, I have. Okay. I have a couple of quick questions, Clara. There was, we had a group of people meeting about the childcare issue when you first came on. Um, are we still meeting with that group? That group has not met since the pandemic, but I mean, there are still people working on the issue. So 
your organization, Greater Fergus Falls, is involved. Um, West Central initi Initiative is <coughs> involved. The city keeps up with it, um, and the county is also involved. And I also know that in addition to Apple Tree Dental, um, Pioneer Care is really struggling with finding workers who need childcare between the hours of 3 and 11. So there's some major issues out there. So yeah, just, shift work is a problem. Just curious, so where does this fall in? How does this come up even as a question for us to tackle? I'm not saying we shouldn't, but these are communities that have been out there for 30 years and we do have a specific purpose for the port and just trying to determine. I'd argue that they fit up. in with economic development, which is what the port is meant for. Um, but also the port has the ability to buy and manage properties and provide infrastructure. Yep, that I, that I understand. Yeah, and I kind of feel like I know where you're going with that. Our mission is to help facilitate economic and community development by investing in the city's infrastructure, which to me says housing, 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 based on the list that we have up there. Do we know what the vacancy rate right now is in the city? We have not had a comprehensive housing study done since about 2015. Um, there was recently a study done that focused on the need for supported housing, which included some numbers. I can send that around to you guys. Well, I'm just wondering if there's ways to just contact all the local, you know, property owners, you know, apartments, whatever, and just have, I mean, just do a random, you know, finding out of how many, what, what is their percentage of vacancy rate so we know exactly what we're dealing with. I mean, because another thing that's going on right now is I know the dental positions and everything else, those are higher paying jobs, but the lower paying jobs that are not being filled right now, they're having the same problem all over the country because the federal government's giving an extra $300 a week on unemployment and it's more profitable to stay home than it is to come to work. Well, and unfortunately... Fergus Hall's Port Authority can't do much about that. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. I mean, if that's that's part of, part of the problem there. But um, to what Caroline and Steve were saying, I, it, to me, it seems like it should be a priority to get that child care group back up and running. Um, convene, I mean, at least virtually, just to, you know, because what it seems like is that a group should come to the Port Authority with an idea and a plan, and we have the resources and the ability to facilitate, you know, uh, on the childcare, there's been so many initiatives on childcare that it's actually exhausting to keep listening to them. And uh, I think there's, there's so many groups that have worked on childcare that somebody has to kind of like take childcare on board and actually do something. Um, and I think that's where, you know, and probably Rebecca's got a better a better input on this, but I know United Way have been involved in it, the county has been involved in it, West Central Initiative has been involved in it, you know, EIC has been involved in it, and and nothing ever nothing ever gets done. So I mean, I, I I would hate to bring back another group that works on childcare that gets nothing done, and and there's so many conflicts. It seems I don't know why why it doesn't ever come to anything, but it, you know. There's no money. Uh, yeah. If you subsidize child care and every and every child care worker could earn six figures, you would not have a child care. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but, but I mean, you know, and, and that would be the same for housing. You know, I mean, if everybody earned a decent wage, then they, they would obviously be able to afford a house. And I don't know whether we can solve all of those problems. You know, as a, as a port authority, I mean, I think we have to kind of tackle one issue. Because, because you know, if we spread, spread too thin, thin, then we don't, don't do anything well. well. You know, and, and I'm, I'm not a, uh, a business owner, um, but it would seem if it was enough of an economic impact to businesses that um, it would be in their interest to, to do something about it. And I'm not criticizing any past efforts or saying people aren't doing what they should be, but 
I mean, if there's a, if it's that big an economic issue, then the, the first company that sets up in-house childcare is going to get all the workers. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, that would be a huge draw. Um, but along, and again, just thinking out loud, I mean, along those same lines, I mean, could a, I mean, could a corporation be formed with shareholders that owns a facility and the costs are spread out and a certain number of spots are allocated to how many shares of particular? Mm -hmm. I got looked at the hospital was involved in that. Northern Contours was involved in that. I think there's another party. I think. Vector, yeah, but they, but they didn't do it. Well, and, and I know so. speaking with our then CEO Kyle Richards, um, when I worked with him, um, he had no interest in it because he, well, and that's that's a rabbit hole. But um, I mean, is is that feasible? And how I mean, how do we how do we make that happen? Um, these are the very important issues. There's no question. My question is, where do we fit in all of this? And it is more than one sec session. I get that. I think Rebecca's right, and you guys are right. Um, but I guess, like, even in just narrowing it down, uh, to your point, Caroline, our mission. You know, what does our mission entail? It's usually, you know, a third party or somebody's yeah. doing something, and they need the city's involvement, and we're an extension of the city. And so, within that mission, we try to help them. And so my first gut is, does someone have something kind of your lines in any of these areas that need us and then we should dang well help them do it. If there's nothing out there, then I guess how far do we go outside that parameter to help in each of these areas? That is certainly not a quick conversation mm -hmm. at all. Not that we shouldn't, but like it's been around for 20 years. So again, we're not going to solve it really quickly. Now, Battle Lake, I think a few years ago, opened up a large facility over there. What kind of incentives, if any, did the city or the county give them in order to facilitate that and is that is something that we could look at in this area i mean as far as getting somebody to open up a facility like that or even if you have home health home child care are there any incentives that the city or county can give in order to help facilitate these because a lot of the things i see my wife did daycare for 20 years and the, like i said when i was with one of these meetings with this before the big thing is, is uh, when you're self-employed is the medical insurance. <clears throat> so any, you know, subsidies that we could give them might help offset some of those medical, you know, insurance needs or a few of the other things like that, that, you know, really make it hard to be self-employed and run your own facilities. Yeah, I'm sure there's a myriad of, um, of challenges that it, it presents. Um, but I, yeah, I'm, I'm inclined to feel like it's not our necessarily the role of this of the port authority to come up with these types of solutions. It it seems like like a third party should come to us, and then we use the resources that we have. I mean, and we'll certainly help and contribute in every can. Uh, Bill. It makes me think of um, often as staff. I want you to know that we are very often thinking of you as the port authority and you know we're, if we're working on a deal or if someone comes to the city or to us as staff we start saying okay where's the best avenue for this to fit in is it a city side where can the port play a role so we do we're kind of thinking along your lines with that if a, when someone comes with a project and they want to talk to the city about it we always think where does the port fit in too so to give you some comfort that we are we are thinking along those lines so mm -hmm. like just what you were saying with and that third party wants i want to do this mm -hmm. how can i do this mm -hmm. well we look okay the port is an option you know we have tools to work with the city does you know other things too so yeah and then i appreciate you mentioning that i, I don't mean to imply that, that you know that you guys aren't exploring oh. Yeah, didn't take um, it that way at all. That's just letting you know that we did, do. Did Children's Corner fill up? I mean, obviously that was an expansion of. There's a waiting like, list. There's a waiting list um, yeah. from people I know who have tried to get in. Um, I know that if you talk to Sue Stachke, she will often say there is not a shortage of childcare possibilities, but 
I think that's become, I mean, it ebbs and flows, but the needs are so different for different families. I do know that, you know, there's some federal dollars that are earmarked for subsidizing childcare. I don't know where that's going to take us down the road. Um, uh, I listened to a city council meeting where they did a report on the RTC study and came up with housing as the best use. I mean, should we be looking at that? And then finally, I'll stop talking in a minute because I hear all I hear is an echo. Um, when we talk about industrial growth, I still want to bring up the idea of having some shovel ready sites available. Yeah, thanks, Rebecca. So this, I mean, this conversation is kind of the crux of where I want us to get is we have all of these options. There are all of these community needs. <coughs> so let's let's narrow in on what what we can help with. And I think I think we we can all recognize that the places where it makes the most sense for the port to fit in would be with industrial growth and development and potentially with housing. Mm -hmm. Right, and I think Steve's point is a good one in where on the continuum we fall in terms of proactive versus reactive, reactive or responsive. You know, um, are we going out with a goal of producing this much housing in this or spending this much money to convert this much housing? You know, or are we here as a tool when things arise like that level four school or, um, you know, CHH or whatever. So I think it is a good thing to, to decide. There's either a third party that is coming to us and we want to be part of that. Or if we don't think there's a third party, but there's still a need, then I guess that's what we'd want to initiate or help somebody else initiate to fill that gap. Exactly. Where's the gap in housing and industrial? I, I think as well, we have to kind of consider the dairy property you know, you know that, that, uh, that obviously yeah. that is a housing potential that is a piece of land that obviously the port authority owns but equally um we also it comes with debt as it, as it sits now and so you know as we go forward we, we have to fund that debt and anything and everything that we do basically obviously involves debt because we don't really have any money as such so, so it's not like we're not, we're not like the city, the city that can float something for a period of time while they get kind of permanent financing in place. So I mean, everything we do is is debt ridden, and and we and the dairy property is coming up, and I, mean, I think you know I, I I see housing as being you know the first one, um, and. Uh, and, and you know, and probably you're looking at the dairy property as being something where you know housing and the dairy property go together, and and, and it could be a win-win for for us to get that one moving. Um, I, I I I I'm I'm not against childcare, but I'm against us putting those resources into trying to drive another initiative on childcare, just because I don't think it's our our role to drive that initiative as you say if somebody came to us and said they want to convert you know kmart into a four thousand head daycare center then and and they need they need some help then we can do that but <laughs> i don't know you get a lot of kids in kmart <laughs> because social distancing isn't going to matter at that age segment them off <coughs> so would it would the port be in agreement then if we if we said that our our first priority would be or i guess some priority of economic development would be housing you seem like that that that's that's what we we want to focus on because it seems like um to my uneducated mind um if you have enough affordable places for people to live and not you know, necessarily designated affordable, but houses that people can afford to buy, um, that that is going to attract workers um, along with the other amenities that we're, you know, that we're working on and, and already have. Um, so, and then, and then I think from what I hear is, is that 
if if somebody comes with us to the plan and says we'd like to build this child care center or whatever it might be um could you help us with the financing or whatever that might be you know then we would entertain that at that time yeah. but um i think i think finding ways that we can use our resources and our abilities to develop housing seems like a good place to start unless anybody has any other thoughts or ideas i mean i, mean, I think you know as, as we said today if we brought in another manufacturing facility that's going to employ even 20 people then we're also going to you know i mean i have four vacancies at the plant you know um so it's like you know i can't afford to lose any more people yeah so and i know vector windows has got vacancies you know everybody's got vacancies so you know but it's but it's a shortage of people that are willing to work So the other part of it is then we could, I don't know if you're looking for direction or whatever, but I mean, additional um, analysis or whatever by you, by staff to kind of reaffirm each of these three, like what is the need? We know they're generally needed, but what's happening in Fergus Falls, you know, with regarding to quantify it and come up with a plan. Is there someone trying to fix each of these things? That type of thing, like we slowly narrow it in and determine if we have a role perhaps with emphasis on housing and industrial sites, I suppose. Maybe. Would it make any sense to try to market that? Say that, you know, hey, the Fergus Falls Port Authority is interested in working with you, developer, uh, come and see us. Or is that is there not is that just not effective? I mean, or we have no way of knowing. I don't we I mean we own land that can become housing, and I think it would be worthwhile to explore some RFP processes, something like that, because there are, I mean, developers want to be building homes, mm -hmm. but the cost of building right now is so high that mm -hmm. it's, I mean, it's a huge barrier. Mm -hmm. So if we can almost package something together and say, developers come in, we have this land, we have these various resources, let's work together. I think that would be ideal. Has there been since our last meeting with the county, like any commitment with them on you know the feedback they got from us? And I just got sent stuff like late afternoon. Okay, and haven't had a chance to go through it. Okay. Well, one of the things we did talk about when they were here was how homes get scooped up by um, landlords buying them, and whether there's a mechanism for us to purchase them prior to that i think they move so fast i, I mean you can keep I, yeah yeah <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't think you could you, you can't move fast enough it's just not that's probably just not realistic at, at this point in time I, i'm not saying down the road it won't change but andrew would basically need to walk around with a duffel bag of cash yeah <laughs> we don't let them do that. No. <laughs> I just, I do the benefit of the city of doing some of those blighted properties. I just, I well, think. he just had a garage sale. Really you should have some extra cash. That's a good example. It has really helped our community, I think. That looks so. Oh, right. What did you Ray say, Bridget? Just that, that, that yeah. the city buys these blighted properties yeah. and <clears throat> turns them over. Oh, yeah. I think a huge benefit to our community. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. so well, if, I, here I am again. <laughs> I am, I am intrigued by this marketing idea that I think Tom mentioned. I just saw an ad placed um, for the big build and how Ottertail County is promoting that. So, and I'm going to have to leave in five minutes for another Zoom meeting. Can, can we schedule a, a true work session? Yeah. Claire, would you maybe could you send out a doodle? Sure. Okay. So we'll send out a doodle poll to get uh, get another session scheduled. What are you guys talking about? How quickly houses are going? Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah, and, and anecdotally from realtors, it's uh, it's just nuts um, right now. So. Uh, and with the price of these building materials go up, even some of these lower cost homes, yeah. you're going to start seeing the prices rise on them because they know they're going to get more. Well, you know, and not, not to go off on too much of a tangent, but it, it, 
you know, somebody had mentioned something to me about how this is affecting home values and appraisals and financing. You know, all of a sudden, you know, comparable homes are worth a lot. And I mean, that's, I think the, the housing market's going to be interesting. And then the problem you're going to see with that is all, all of a sudden, all the prices are going to start skyrocketing. The building materials prices are going to go back down again, however long it takes. Then you're going to have all these people who have built all these homes and the value is going to be less because the price of materials went down. So I don't think we can like notwithstanding the pricing issue. That's big right now. There's no question, but hopefully it's temporary. There's yeah. got to be some kind of adjustment. We probably can't fix it. It's also kind of nationwide or whatever. Yeah. But irrespective of that, like what could we do to, to identify potential for a town like Fergus Falls? So what are other cities doing in the United States like this? There's various models. I mean, some there is some corporate ownership. Some of it's probably driven by cities. I don't have a clue. I think that would be worth either helping somebody else do that and encouraging them to do it, or do we do that? I don't know. But that would help us identify, okay, there's these three or four options that fit a city like ours. Could we help out and do those? Because if we don't know that, I then we're just kind of hoping and praying somebody comes and mm -hmm. is it any good? But if stuff's already been done out there, and I think that's what we need to figure out. So how do we get that information? That's my question. Claire, do you think you're I mean, are there like you know associations of your peers that you could reach out to or resources or um you know, maybe Greater Fergus Falls could be a resource to Yeah. And I mean Natalia and I are working closely on all of this okay. so, and she was on earlier but I, she had to drop off i guess but, yeah, yeah i mean I, I think at the very least you know i i don't really know how that process works but putting out an rfp that just says hey developers we've got land um if you want to work with us on it we'd love to hear what you have to say does that make sense for us to do that's fine no, I'm just kind of curious with the dairy property starting to get cleaned up and getting finished here has there been any calls on it at all no, knowing what it's set aside for i was just curious if there's anybody been even you know calling and just poking around to see what the you know what the schedule is on it um, no not that i'm aware of okay i would guess that it's you know still early enough in in, in the project where a developer wouldn't you know once it's close to done you know then i would but we should we should market that too in fact. Yeah, because I mean that's gonna end up being more more high end apartments over there, but then that frees up the other ones because the people who are in other ones right now that want more high end will move into those and that'll free up apartments and you know the more you know the cheaper rent apartments. Well and hopefully it would, you know, say you built condos on the river, there would be, you know, folks that would want to move into a condo and move out of a single family home that would then open up. So <laughs> That's what I'm rooting for. But so just in the interest of time, I guess I will send out a doodle poll for a work <laughs> session and we can <coughs> narrow in a little bit further on this RFP idea for Portland, uh, which will help us probably identify what our needs are budget wise moving forward, which is what we need to do to be able to work with the budget process. Um, yeah, so I think that was a good discussion. Thank you all. Yeah, thanks everyone. That was good uh, Good input. So we've got uh, something to build on for our work session. So. Yeah, so I will um, I will just also end it with the an update on Progress Drive. So, and it's really, I, there's not a lot that we're going to say publicly, but it's moving forward and things are looking really good. We had a great meeting with Otter Tail Power to talk about some of the power lines that are going across the sites and um, they're going to be shifted around, which is gonna be very helpful for future development. So I'm, I'm happy with the way things are going and I think we'll see some movement. Can we get Steve's employee discount? <laughs> so they're they're being incredibly reasonable to work with and it's all going very well. Awesome. That's yeah. cool. Good. Well, thanks for all your work on that. Uh, unless there's anything else to come before the court, we will go ahead and adjourn. And Clara, I, um, I did play football with the deed commissioner. So if you uh, need anything, just let me know. Like in college? What do you, or like <laughs> recently? Like it's kind of running around. <laughs> so, I don't know what you're So the way it happened, I, I went to high school with him in North Carolina. Oh. Uh, I did not play football. Okay. But he thinks I played football. Right? Oh.
No, but um, it was really funny because shortly after the shortly after no, the, 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 the Wolves administration came in, um, so you got hearing pieces, and that's, that's even worse. And, and Joel and I were at the Capitol uh -huh. testifying for something. Um, and we poked our head into this room, and there was this guy testifying before a committee. And, um, you know, I didn't, I was kind of listening. I knew it was not yet. Then it said, then one of the slides that came at the end of it, it said, you want to choose to go And I was like, and I looked at it and I'm like, well, I'll be. And um, so we were walking oh, out and I, we were going down the stairs and I mentioned Joel. I said, I said, oh, let's go with that guy. And Joel just stops and he goes, we're going back. <laughs> and so we went back and found him in the hall and I was like, hey, Steve, Tom Rufer. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, we play football together. And I'm like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> you you sure that time did. Did. <laughs> so Ben gobbled that. Yeah. Ben gobbled that right up. Okay. And that's that's kind of our inside joke, that's isn't right. it? But I, I do, I do know this, you know, I mean, okay. the other. so cool. um, I should probably reach out to him on a more regular basis just to kind of have that relationship, but, um, right? um, yeah, so I think, uh, yeah, that's good to know, actually. Kind of later, right? right. Yeah. 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 So, so would you, and this is, you know, between you and Andrew, but I mean, like, would you have any interest in, in any kind of a, that's already yes. I, yes, I already am. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and, so and so you they all going to come together. This is not stuff to to find out their needs. Well, well Natalia's on that currently, so we've got a handful of businesses that we're talking to about. Come on, about the same time. Ones that were identified initially, Lake Region Healthcare Vector. Um, Northern yeah. Contours are by really the only ones who have the made, yeah, so well, no, that's not true, LB Homes, or, you know, no, Pioneer Care have that, made inroads with their staff about talking about, about child care needs, and they've so done it, surveys of their staff, Lake Region Healthcare did one years ago, that I think the predecessor to your current CEO, Kyle potentially did either did not see or was not involved with or um, something. I remember this survey though. I know, so do I. It doesn't seem like it was all that long ago, but then again, yeah. my daughter started calling. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I mean things are in the works. There the, but the problem is finding providers, finding a place for the providers, finding funding. But I don't know what that is. I don't big enough. So there I mean it's a real there's a reason it yeah. is taking as long yeah. to so, solve this problem yeah, as it is. Same discussions. The yeah. then what kind of factor are you, you going to get on single? And platform. you, I mean, you can talk to all the and businesses they, you want. They'll agree to the problem, but actually taking that step yeah, further it's, it's, and saying we agree it's a problem and we're that that willing to put forth X a month of funding. That lake made it happen somehow, but first of all, just has not been able to do it. We just we don't have the same level of buy-in or whatever. No, and I'm going to I just remember we're in town. I just 